Welcome everyone. We'll get started in just a few minutes. Good afternoon and welcome to the American Heart Association's Westchester County WIC Benefits Community Forum. My name is Diego Ortiz, Communications Director, and thank you for joining us for this important discussion. And of course, a special thank you to our presenting sponsor, WestMed Medical Group. Please visit this conversation's companion page at Eastern States heart.org slash Westchester WIC. I'll ask our producer to please put the, the link in the chat box. And for anyone interested, we had a February forum about the SNAP benefits program. Uh, and you can visit that link by clicking the link in the chat box right now. Thank you so much, Mark, for sharing that. In just a few minutes, we'll hear from Sharon Derrico, director of WIC, for Sun River Health and Elena Tatio, Program Administrator and Outreach Coordinator for Westchester County Department of Health. But before we begin, we want to help answer the question, why are we talking about WIC? Well, the American Heart Association recognizes the importance of nutrition, access to healthcare, and education throughout the life cycle. Research suggests that a mother's prenatal health and the child's health during the first few years of life are critical to ensuring that children grow up to be healthy adults. WIC saves lives and improves the health of nutritionally at-risk women, infants, and children. Since its beginning in 1974, the WIC program has earned the reputation of being one of the most successfully federally funded nutrition programs in the United States. It's improved birth outcomes and savings and healthcare costs. It's improved diet and diet related outcomes. It's improved infant feeding practices, immunization rates, and regular source of Medicare, medical care, um, as well as improved cognitive development. Ultimately, WIC improves the health of mothers and their children helping set the stage for longer, healthier lives. So that's why we're here today. Okay, well, now that we've set the groundwork, I would like to invite Sharon and Elena to please turn on your cameras and, and join the conversation. Good afternoon. Oh. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you both so much for, for joining us. I'm really you know, excited to have this conversation for a number of reasons. One of them being that we are currently in the middle of Women's History Month. And just yesterday was International uh, Women's Day. So this is significant because we're talking about women, infant, and children. Um, Sharon, you were kind enough to join us last month uh, to talk about SNAP with a little bit of, of the conversation uh, focused on WIC 
as well. So, so thank you for joining us once again. But let, let's, uh, we'd love to get started by asking you the question very generally, what is WIC and who is eligible? Okay, thank you. Um, the Women, Infants and Children program is a nutrition education program. And we also provide a wide variety of supplemental foods to families. We also provide breastfeeding promotion and support and referrals to other services and do growth monitoring for children and families throughout the time they're enrolled on WIC. So the WIC program is open to families who are income eligible and we serve pregnant women, postpartum and breastfeeding women, infants and children up to the age of five. Well, that's just excellent. And those again are such crucial years and crucial time in the in, in individual's development. Um, and we'll get into a little bit more about the services, but first, um, Elena, thank you so much for joining us. Um, can you tell us where can you apply for WIC? Is it something you do online, over the phone, in person? Give us a little bit more details. Thank you for having me, first of all. Um, so right now, because we are working remotely, anyone um, can call our office and apply and over the phone and we can pre-screen them. So basically they can ask any questions they have on the phone. Well, if they do qualify, we'll set them up for an appointment. Okay, that's excellent. And let's 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 talk more about what's unique about WIC. So Sharon, we'll start with you and Elena, please feel free to, to add any anything additionally. Um, what services can WIC provide? Okay. I also just wanted to mention there's also a growing up healthy hotline that people can um, search and they can help them to find them a WIC location nearest to them in their county. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. Actually, signupwick.com also is a, a fairly new um, site that um, it's pretty straightforward. You put in your zip code, you can find the local agency closest to you and, you know, find a place that works best for you. Thank you. And as a reminder, you can find links to those pages on our companion page, as well as, as, well as the phone number for the service that Sharon just mentioned. So um, WIC is unique in that um, once a family is enrolled, we help them with um, all kinds of different nutrition education. So say if we enroll a prenatal woman, we try to get people at the beginning of their pregnancy so that they can um, you know, have all of the services that we provide and we can provide them with as much nutrition education throughout their pregnancy journey. So we may have an appointment with them and we may talk about breastfeeding. Um, we have ways to support them in breastfeeding. We have peer counselors who can reach out to them along the way and talk to them about breastfeeding and give them really valuable nutrition education. Um, we work with moms who might have diabetes. So we'll work with them with their diet. We work with, once the baby is born, we may talk about how to prepare, prepare formula for the infant, how much an infant should be eating, bottle weaning, dental health, um, introducing your baby to solid foods. So there's a lot of nutrition education that we provide from pregnancy up until the child is the age of five. You know, and, and I think I think it's just phenomenal to, to really see the educational components and, and the additional services that, that are provided um, through through WIC from breastfeeding. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned you know, we mentioned how how important that is. Um, I want to I want to just briefly cover the topic of eligibility again, because I think a question that we often get is around. Um, immigration stat, uh, status or the family's immigration status. So can or can your immigration status or your family's status prevent you from receiving WIC? No, we don't ask any questions about citizenship status. Um, all information that we talk about with any families is kept confidential. So we don't ask questions about citizenship. Um, as far as eligibility, Families who, we have something called adjunct eligibility. 
So families who are already receiving services such as SNAP or Medicaid are automatically eligible for the WIC program. If they are not receiving either of those services, then we go by household income, which is gross income and um, the number of people in the household. Thank you. And, and uh, Elena, I know that the, this program is, is WIC and the W in WIC is, is for women, but can fathers also receive any benefits through WIC? Fathers can um, certify their children, but they themselves do not receive benefits from WIC. So only so women, infants, and they, children would receive food benefits. The fathers they can certainly can sign for up their children? for their children, yes. We do have a, a, a good amount of dads that um, either they are just more available than the mother or they're the caretaker, and they can sign their children up the same way. You know, and Sharon had kind of started going down this path talking about um, income as it relates to eligibility. Um, we talked about it in, in some detail in the SNAP conversation, but Elena, can you tell us, can you work and maintain WIC? Absolutely. Um, again, we, we have a lot of people that qualify just through their income. So basically we're, we're pretty straightforward the way we screen for the household. Um, it goes based on the gross income and the amount of people in the household. So again, when somebody calls to pre-screen to see if they qualify, then we can let them know right on the phone if you know we ask them some questions and we can determine um, if they are eligible through their income or not. Some, something that always comes up is the question of what should I bring with me when I go and, and, and you know, apply for these programs? So tell us, both, both you, um, Elena and Sharon, what documents should I bring to my WIC appointment? So um, the basic documents that we would need are proof of identification, proof of residency, which normally we ask for a postmarked piece of mail that someone has or a utility bill usually people provide. Sometimes they'll provide a lease. So ID, proof of residency, proof of income. So it might be a copy of your Medicaid card, your SNAP benefit letter, or your most recent pay stubs for the past 30 days. Um, if someone is enrolling as a prenatal woman, we also ask for proof of pregnancy. Elena, is there anything that you wanted to add to that? Um, well, if we're going to talk a little bit about how we're operating now during COVID, um, we can, if somebody is adjunctly, adjunctively eligible right now, we can use even their Medicaid to um, cover their identity, proof of residency, and their income right now. Well, thank you. And I also want to mention that on the companion site, uh, there is a link to a list of what to bring to your WIC appointment. Um, so that, that'll really help you do all the things that Sharon just mentioned from the residency, the identity, as well as proving that you are one of the people served, that uh, proving your status as one of the people served by WIC. Um, you know, the, something that I was very curious about as we we're talking about how do we differentiate this benefit program from the SNAP program, and that's the referrals to other services, how important that is. So Sharon, can you talk to us a little bit about um, those referrals and, and how you can connect uh, the participants to, to other resources? Sure. So throughout their enrollment, we do um, different nutrition assessments. So when we certify a mom, we make sure that she's income eligible, and then she sits with a nutritionist who does a complete nutrition assessment. And we ask a variety of questions, um, maybe about, you know, has your child received immunizations? Does your child see a dentist? So we find out where their needs are, and then we try to refer them to appropriate agencies. We do a lot of referrals to dentist office, to the Department of Health for immunizations, um, for parenting support. We use Healthy Families a lot. So um, that's how we refer people out to different programs. You know, emer emergency feeding services is, is another, um, some of the pantries we refer people to. No, I, I, I really, I really appreciate it. And, and I think it's so important. And as I look at the list of, you know, some of the services that you're able to refer women to, Elena, I'm looking at some like uh, domestic violence, resources about stopping smoking, 
vaccination, substance abuse, even cancer prevention, how is that beneficial to, to residents is, uh, residences of Westchester County? Well, um, to add on to what Sharon was saying, when we um, certify a mom or a family, we ask, um, the nutritionists ask a, a variety of health and lifestyle questions. So that helps us identify, you know, the type of referrals that they might need. And also what helps our nutritionists tailor their counseling sessions. And we follow up at each appointment with those referrals and with, you know, if there are health risks um, assigned to that family or that participant, um, the, the nutritionist is able to, you know, be in contact frequently, fairly frequently, every, at least every three months and sometimes sooner if there is like a high risk need. So, um, and we have so many resources in Westchester. Um, as Sharon was saying, with healthy families, we have maternal health programs, North, nurse family partnerships, you know, there's just so many referrals and, and staying in close contact with our partners is the best way that we can share current information with our participants. And then they, if they have people who are eligible and need assistance from us, they, they refer to us. So it's a, it's a really good referral, a two-way referral system in that way. Uh, I agree, I agree. And Lena, you, you kind of mentioned that we were gonna, we're gonna talk about COVID. I think it's impossible not to talk about how this virus, how this pandemic has impacted all of our lives. Can you tell us a bit about WIC pre-COVID and some of the um, adaptations or advancements that you've made today? Sure. Um, the biggest thing is that, you know, with since COVID, it's almost a year actually that we've been providing remote services and different clinics operate, you know, a little differently based on their sponsoring agency. But the way that Westchester County um, WIC program and our Yonkers and Porchester clinics are operating now before, um, well, let me back up. Let me say what was happening before. Before everyone would come in for every appointment, depending on the type of appointment would depend on if the child or uh, the mom would be weighed, have their hemoglobin um, tested and how many, the types of questions we would ask and the assessments and so on. So now, um, since we are not seeing anyone in person, we are doing everything remotely, which is really beneficial for our participants because it reduces a lot of barriers to you know, receiving services. Um, the challenging thing is to get the heights and weights and the um, hemoglobin information from the, the HCPs. So we do work closely with our, you know, the doctors in our areas to try to get that information so that, that because that is part of the assessment that we do and how we track growth and, and progress over time. So it, it is much easier now to um, be serviced, I'll say, through WIC, the way that we're operating now. Um, and our, what we call a show rate, where um, the amount of participants that attend their appointments is much higher than it was before. And tell us a little bit about the, the innovations that, that we, we chatted about before. Um, you mentioned the eWIC card, uh, organic foods, the app, and, and either Elena or, or Sharon, and, and I'd love for both of you to be able to share some of those innovations. Yeah, there's been some really exciting things that have happened in the WIC program over the past uh, couple of years. And um, one of the things that always came up as sort of a barrier for people staying on the program was uh, the WIC shopping experience. We used to provide paper checks to participants and it created a really difficult shopping experience, not only for the WIC participant, but for the cashier at the store as well. Um, so a couple of years ago, we went to an eWIC card, which looks like a credit card. Um, and it's much more discreet at the cash register. It's a much easier transaction. People don't have to separate their groceries um, by what's just on the check. Um, it's a family food package. So it has just become an easier part program to participate in. With the eWIC card, there's also an app called wic to go so participants can go into their smartphone and see what benefits they have, what benefits they've already purchased, what they have left to purchase. They can uh, scan items at the grocery store to see if it's a WIC eligible item to purchase. And they can also see when their uh, future appointments are. 
Um, a lot of foods have been added to the WIC acceptable foods card list, which is just really, really fantastic. There's a, a big variety now of cereals from a lot of popular brands. Um, there's organic foods. You can purchase organic fruits and vegetables now, organic infant foods. You used to only be able to purchase like peach baby food or pear baby food. Now you can get combination infant foods. They've added a whole grain option and a cash value benefit for fresh frozen or canned fruits and vegetables. So it's really come a long way over the last few years, but the implementation of the eWIC card and the WIC to go app has just made for such a nicer shopping experience for the participants. Well, I, I love I love to hear that. And anytime we can we can talk about accessibility and, and improving accessibility, I think we're on the right track. Um, Elena, is there anything that that you want to add in terms of some of the innovations that you've seen recently, um, whether it's post COVID, pre COVID, just some things that you've helped that you think have helped this program? Well, I can say that um, the just changing over to having an electronic system has been a mm -hmm. huge, you know, help because we would not be able to operate the way we have been over the past year if we were running with paper checks. So mm -hmm. very grateful that that was in place prior to COVID. Um, and it is, um, like Sharon was saying, it's very, it's a lot more discreet. It reduces some of the stigma, um, some of the awkward you know, moments at the cash register when you were fumbling through paper checks. So it really, in that sense, for our participants, is so beneficial. Um, and we know that the USDA is looking at, you know, continuing with this type of technology and um, seeing now that we've worked, you know, remotely, how we can, you know, provide better services going forward, even once we get back to normal, <laughs> if that ever happens. But, mm. um, so the technology, I think, has just been a tremendous benefit to our participants and allowed us to provide, we could never have done remote appointments before this way. Mm -hmm. Love seeing innovation, I, I, really, I really do. Um, so as we're, as we're reaching a little closer to 12.30, um, I think I will probably only have time for, for a few more questions, but I, I wanna hear from, from both of you, um, just in your personal experience, because I know you both have been doing this for, for a few years, um, what has been the most significant impact of WIC? I think just um, working with the families, and I'm, I know now for our program, um, we have more of the people that are enrolled on the program are utilizing the program. Like sometimes we would have people enrolled on the program, but they weren't coming in to pick up their benefits. Right now, we're really touching the line that almost all of our participants who are enrolled in the program right now are actually really utilizing the program. And I find that the more that we get the word out to them about the new foods that were added in 2020, um, they're really excited about it, you know, um, as far as have, being able to get the options of organic foods, the organic baby foods, the fruits and vegetables that didn't used to be on the program. Um, I work now with sometimes I have participants who were on, now their daughters are on the program, you know, and I hear from them, well, we didn't have that way back when. So um, it's so much, it's such a better program now with um, having such a wide variety of foods on it. How, how about you? What has been the most significant impact that you've seen with WIC? I, that's a, you know, but that's a, a tough question for me to answer because I've seen an impact. I mean, not just from what I've seen, if you, you know, look at statistics and look at, you know, how it's impacted um, our infants and children and, and moms in the country. But um, I think, you know, just the way that we are progressing with technology, um, staying, you know, having um, our nutritionists um, and having like specialists at the office, like we have registered dietitians, we have master's level nutritionists. We're able to work on a, you know, for more high risk care with um, healthcare providers. Our breastfeeding, <clears throat> excuse me, our breastfeeding program is really, um, I feel like one of the areas that we have grown a lot in. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, having 
improving breastfeeding rates across the country is, you know, speaks for itself. <laughs> so I think in that respect, that is a huge part of our program and um, a, a way that we can support our moms to have a healthy start from the beginning. Um, so, and there's, there's just so many, like I said, resources, every family that we see have such different needs and um, being able to do assessments and screenings and work with our, our healthcare providers and our partners. I feel like we have this comprehensive system that is you know, really needed and such a great support to our families. Well, thank you both for, for, for those responses. And you know, I, I, I do see um, at least one question here in our chat box. And I think Sharon, you might be able to answer this one. Um, the question is how many sites or counties at Sun River Health offer WIC services? So we have eight sites. Um, we have Sullivan County, that's Monticello and Liberty and Wordsboro. We have Dutchess County. We have sites in Poughkeepsie and Beacon. We have our Peekskill site in Westchester and we have Walden and Amenia. So we have one in Orange County and one in Eastern Duchess. So it sounds like there's there's uh, a number of sites depending on your uh, county of residence. Yeah, yeah, and five of them are permanent sites, which means they're open daily, and three of them are temporary sites. So we go to those sites once a month. Those are in more uh, rural areas, I would say. Excellent, thank you. And I and really, I, I think uh, we have one. I have one more question that. Or I have. I want to uh, pose an opportunity for both of you to to leave a a parting thought. Um, so, what is this? What is that final takeaway? What's that message that you want um, people in attendance or people who watch this video at a future date to take away from this conversation? I think that for the uh, providers and people in the community who are seeing this right now is for them to know that they are our biggest advocates and they can really um, help us to help families, um, you know, reconnect with the WIC program if they haven't been participating in years because it has changed so much for the better. And that's the word that I think is very important to get out into the community. Um, just to try. And Elena, same question for you from the Westchester Department of Health. I just want to add also that our offices in Westchester are again in Yonkers and in Portchester. And um, I hope that, you know, just this is such a great start. That's why I appreciate so much that um, the American Heart Association is doing this, this um, kind of outreach or, you know, presentation because I think having our healthcare providers and our partners, social workers, you know, people in charge of community programs really have a good understanding, you know, or a better understanding of the program um, will help so that they know what, what type of services that we can provide. It's not just about healthy foods, it's so much more. Um, it is very easy now to just find a location near you. Again, it's um, signupwic.com. Our, um, you can also search our site by going to westchestergov.com and just search up WIC and you'll find our page with all of our resources there. And um, again, I just want, there's a lot of people who are eligible, you know, the numbers show that, that are not on our program. And we want to make sure that we reach um, everyone who needs our services. So how do we do that? You know, and as Sharon said, again, just our healthcare providers and our community partners are, are really uh, a great way to get that information out. And um, we just want to make sure that we are providing services to those who are in need. Well, and now really the, the final, final question, how can people reach you? How can people reach your offices or your organizations? Sharon, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, we are listed on Sun River Health internet we are on the public page there if you look under the social part of our internet page you will see the WIC program there. Elena, I know you meant you mentioned uh, the the two county websites can you just repeat those one more time? 
Sure. The uh, well, the signupwick.com is a state website, so you can find wherever you're located. Um, you can find a, an agency closest to you, and um, our offices are in Yonkers and Port Chester. This is uh, I see uh, in the chat box somebody saying there's other offices in, in Westchester. Yes, that's true. The Westchester County Department of Health WIC programs are in Yonkers and Port Chester. You can visit our website at westchestergov.com, just search WIC, or you can call, there are people answering our phones all day long. <laughs> you can call 231-2510 for Yonkers, that's 914, or for Port Chester, 914-813-7244. And that's all on our website as well. Well, thank you both. I mean, this has been an informative conversation. I know that the folks who are listening now and those who will listen in the future uh, will definitely benefit from, from this conversation. So thank you to Sharon DeRico, Director of WIC for Sun River Health, and Elena Tatio, Program Administrator and Outreach Coordinator for Westchester County Department of Health. Uh, we want to thank everyone who's able to tune in today on behalf of the American Heart Association uh, in Westchester County. Thank you so much for joining us. And then we wanna give one more special thank you to our presenting sponsor, WestMed Medical Group. And please, we encourage all of you to visit the conversation companion page at easternstates.heart.org slash Westchester WIC. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for putting that in the chat box. Uh, everyone, this is uh, National Nutrition Month. It's Women's History Month. This is such a great opportunity for us to really evaluate our health, our nutrition, and most importantly, to really take care of ourselves, our loved ones, and everyone in our community. So on behalf of the AHA, once again, thank you and talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.